Hello and welcome to our video on the overview of configuring Directory Importer. Directory Importer is used to connect to your Active Directory, also known as AD, to import users and technicians out of that system into TrackIt. Active Directory is your directory server where all users, technicians, computer assets, a lot of those things are listed. Everything that has permissions or is an entity in your AD. It's a lot easier to import those items into TrackIt out of the Active Directory than it is to try and add them, especially if you have a few hundred users. So as you can see here on my screen, I'm already in the TrackIt configuration module. If you don't remember how to get to that, you simply click the menu on the left side of TrackIt and select configuration. Now we're going to be talking about a lot of things in Active Directory, things like SAM account names and directory attributes and mappings and there will be a directory service name and a user ID and password required. If you're not familiar with any of those kinds of things, you may need to get somebody who's more familiar with your Active Directory to assist you with this setup. Once you're in configuration, you'll notice the directory importer button right here in the middle of the screen. If you click this, you'll notice there are three options, directory service, field mappings, and selection and licensing. I'm going to click directory service and show you that first. Here's where you configure the actual directory service and the user ID and password that will be used to connect to that directory service. I have a sample domain name in here, but of course you would put the actual name of your active directory service. Here you would put your user ID and then your password. Then you would save those and click test connection. Test connection will go ahead and connect to the directory service with this user ID and password just to make sure that it's configured correctly. Once the user ID and directory service are set up, we just go back, we click on directory importer again, and then we select field mappings. Now that we're on the field mappings screen here, notice there is a technicians tab and a requesters tab because you can map the attributes from Active Directory differently for your technicians and for your requesters, depending on how you have everything set up. Notice at the top of the technicians tab here, we have a group. This is the group and track it that all of the technicians you import using this configuration will end up in. For now, I'm gonna leave that as my help desk group. Let's take a look at the field mappings here below. We have some default mappings. You'll notice there is one at the top here that's grayed out the technician ID that is mapped to the SAM account name field from Active Directory. And that is grayed out because we use the SAM account name as the unique identifier for the technician. So that one cannot be changed. All the other mappings can be changed. On the left side, you'll see the actual track it field name. And on the right side, you'll see the name from Active Directory. So for example, first name, that's a field in track it. We have that mapped to given name from the Active Directory service. If you click on this little plus sign, you'll get a list of all the attributes available from your Active Directory, and you can just pick one. We have also done something here for you if you want to use Windows Authentication. We've actually set up the Windows Authentication field in the Technician table to have a one or true value in it. So what this will do is not only are you going to import the user's Active Directory account into their Windows user ID field and track it here, we're also going to enable Windows authentication for TrackIt, which means when the technician connects to the TrackIt system, they will be automatically logged in using the current login ID and password they're logged into their Windows system with. Now, if you don't want to map this and you don't want to turn on this feature, you can simply click the X here and that will remove that field mapping. Now, if you make some changes to your field mappings and then you decide later that you want to go back to the default, we do have a button here, Restore Default Mapping. You can just click that. It will ask you if you're sure you want to do that. And then it will reset your configuration back to the default mapping. One other important thing to note about this setting here, the Windows Authentication setting that we have mapped for you, notice that there are brackets around this one. There is a option here in Directory Importer to enter static text that you want to go into some of these fields. So if you put static text in brackets, then that information will be imported straight into the field. If there's a certain attribute that you want to plug in to all your technician accounts that is not stored in your Active Directory, then all you would do here is you would click the plus sign, you would select the field, then you would type in here the text that you want to enter into that field surrounded by brackets. That's how you would enter static text into a field. 
So if we use Windows Authentication, that's a Boolean field or a true-false field. And by putting in brackets with a 1, we're turning that configuration option on. We're actually checking that box by putting that 1 in here. So for now, I'm going to just click Restore Defaults. I'm going to say Yes. I'm going to click Save. Now I'm done with my technician mapping. I'm going to go over to my requesters. These are my end users that I'm going to import so they can use self-service. Basically the same thing. There's a requester ID, and we map that to the SAM account name from Active Directory. That's our unique identifier. Can't change that one. All these other ones you can change. If you want to use Windows Authentication to allow those users to connect in using their AD credentials and not have to remember a track it user ID and password, you can go ahead and leave this setting, and we'll go ahead and flip that on for you. Once you have your mappings all configured, you click Go Back, and then we're ready to set up the licensing and the selection criteria. In the selection and licensing screen here, notice again there's a technicians and a requesters tab. We're going to start with our technicians. So here under select directory group, once you have your directory configured and your user ID configured on that first screen that we looked at, when you come in here and you click this drop down, you'll actually get a list of all the directory groups that you have in your active directory. And it will look like a tree view with little plus signs and you can expand them. So you can scroll down here through the list of groups, pick the group that you want to import. In this particular case, since it's technicians, it's probably a special group that you've created just for your help desk technicians. And it wouldn't be something like domain users or all users because you wouldn't want everyone to be a technician. So here you would select just the group that holds all of your technicians in your Active Directory. And you would set what kind of license you want to assign to them when you import them in. Now, if you have some technicians that you want to use named licenses and some you want to use concurrent licenses, you can configure those users in Active Directory groups, and then you can add multiple mappings by clicking this plus sign here, and you can set one group to use concurrent licenses, and you can set one group to use name licenses. If you have certain people that you want to have in the system, so you can assign them tickets, but you don't necessarily want them to log in, you could even set this to no license. There are some use cases where people do this. It's not very common, but it is an option if you want to do it that way. Lastly, down here, there's a little check mark. It says delete technicians and requesters that are not found in Active Directory. If you turn this on, the directory importer will do exactly that. So if you're doing this import a second time, when the import runs and it scans through the system, if it finds people that are in Trackit that used to be in Active Directory and have been deleted, then the directory importer will delete them from Trackit. I'm going to go to my requesters tab. The requesters tab has a similar drop down here to select the directory group. This one you might want to select all users or domain users. This is going to be a larger group because it's all of your end user requesters on your network. So you're going to select that group and then you're going to select which license type they get. In this configuration screen you get either no license or self-service license. If you have a group of users that you want to grant access to the Trackit self-service portal, you can select that group and then select self-service license for them. If you have another group of requesters that you want to bring in that don't have access to self-service, you can select that directory group and then for them select no license. Once you're done with all of your group selection and licensing setup, you click go back. If you make changes and you try to leave without saving them, Trackit will warn you about that back to the main directory service screen and you can click import users. At this point the directory importer will connect to Active Directory, find all those groups that you have specified and pull them in according to the settings that you've configured. You'll see a progress bar going across here and then when the process is complete it will give you a last run date and time so you know when the last time it was run. So that is an overview of configuring directory importer for more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside Trackit. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community, where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.